Live on BYU Radio and BYU TV, welcome back. Jerem Jordan, Jason Shepard. Our first guest of the day is a man we like to call Shooter McJudkins. Juddy buddy, our buddy. He is Jeff Judkins, the women's basketball coach, live from his home on Skype via the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Jeff, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. It's right. It's been a little bit slow. This is usually a real busy time with basketball and watching games and preparing for games. And then, of course, recruiting never stops. And so that part of it, is, it's been a little hard. But uh, we've... We've been able to manage, and we know that this is a real serious situation right now with our country, in fact, the world, and we just have to listen to our leaders and do what we're supposed to be doing. Jetty, uh, you and I have known each other for a very long time, and I know you well enough to know you probably aren't doing a lot of Skyping or have done a lot of Skype. I want to know how long it has taken you to figure out how to Skype today. Well, thank goodness I have sons and daughters that are... <laughs> way better in technology. So I kind of went through a practice run with my son, Jackson, and he kind of helped me set it all up so that I could do this. And but it, this is amazing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things. I don't know, people probably in the world, they just do what they normally need to do in their job and what, what they need to do. And there's other things out there that, like this, that I'm not really too used to. And he, he did a great job of setting me up with it. And so now I can talk to you guys. It, it is notable that in uh, chaos and crazy times in the world's history, some of the greatest innovations have come out of that, right? So uh, here we are talking to you uh, this way. Hey, maybe you're on the road next year during the season. We're hitting you up on the on Skype or something, right? So uh, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, let's. Play. That is that. You know, you know, it's really it's really amazing what we can do with this, and it, I think it's kept everything somewhat alive. I mean, imagine if none of this would happen; it would be pretty boring. Yeah, it's pretty boring with this, let's be honest. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's better with it, absolutely. Uh, we're wearing baseball uh, gear of our favorite teams. Today would have been Major League Baseball opening day. Did you play baseball growing up? Oh, yeah, I, I played for Highland, and I had a couple college scholarships. I could have gone to BYU, and I could have gone to Utah. So um, I'm, I'm an all right baseball player. Do you have a favorite all, team? All right, yeah. D1 yeah, 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 apparently. Yeah. Do, do you? I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know. You have how much you follow it, but are you, are you still a a fan? Do you have a favorite team still to this day? Well, you know, when I played for the for the Boston Celtics, uh, the Red Sox were the team that I kind of followed uh, and watched at that time. Bruce Hurst was uh, on the team as a pitcher. Got me a couple tickets to Fenway. If that's a great ballpark to really go to. I, when I was younger in the 70s, it was Cincinnati Reds, Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, uh, that group. Um, I'd say right now, probably my big teams was probably Atlanta Braves and probably Boston uh, Boston Red Sox. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Nice run from the Braves there in the 90s as well. And Red Sox are trying to lose by uh, getting rid of everybody. Hey, you know, David speak, Price and Mookie Betts. Speaking of Bruce Hurst, you want to talk about random here, Jetty. I ran into Bruce Hurst at Liberty Jail one time. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a great place to meet him. <laughs> if you're not a member of yeah. the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you just thought that Jason Shepard <laughs> yeah. went to jail. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of context that, for some It was the visitor center. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about your team. So, obviously, a disappointing finish, right? right losing in the, uh, in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Then, uh, later that week, you find out, hey, everything's done. Were you hoping for a, a WNIT bid? And, and kind of what was the reaction from your team to, okay, now it's officially over? Well, you know, when we lost, it was tough. And, I told my team that um, I think we have a good chance of going some postseason. So when we got back, we met as a team, and, and I said, hey, uh, do you guys still want to do it if we have an opportunity to go postseason? And all of them really wanted to do it. So we were planning on playing somewhere. Um, we, were, we were kind of disappointed and wanted to kind of change things and come out and play a lot better than what we did. And, uh, and then, of course, this all happens, and we, we can't do it. I I think a lot of the seniors were, were pretty disappointed because they they wanted to leave on a lot better note than what we did. What type of contact are you allowed to have with your players? And then from a recruiting standpoint, what are you allowed to do? Can you do anything recruiting-wise right now? You can call, you can text, you can email, you can write. We can't bring any players uh, on campus. We can't go to their home in a contact 
situation. We're kind of in locked right now until April 15th, but it's a lot of calling. There's a lot of, uh, you know, calling, texting, probably maybe more now than it's been in the, in, as usual, because we're sitting around thinking about it a lot more than where maybe we'd be out recruiting or we'd be working out our players or we'd be preparing for a game. You don't have as much time to think about it, but now it's, uh, it, it's a lot more. I know this, I've been receiving probably 30 to 40 tech or I guess emails every day of players have interest at BYU. And so a lot of, a lot of the high school kids are starting to send a lot more stuff to you now because, because of this time. Is that more or less than normal at this? At this it's time? more. It's, it's more. more. Usually it's about maybe, I usually probably get 10, maybe a day. Now it's probably double, triple sometimes. Hmm. Do you think that's because everyone's at home yes. chilling right yes. now? Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of them are sitting there and they want to know what they're doing. They're not moving around. They're not hearing anything. They're not going to turn us for a week and watch them play. So, yeah, they're they're doing a lot more of that. With some time now to reflect on the season, you, you're, you're further away from the WCC tournament. How, how do you look back on the season now? Is it different then once it ended, when you still had some of the emotion, now that you're a little bit further away, do you have a little more perspective on the season? Well, you know, I think most people would would have been really excited and happy for a second place finish, a chance to go to a postseason. But at BYU, you know, our goal is to win a conference championship, to win the tournament, to go to the NCAA tournament. That's that's what our goals are every year. So. It was a little bit disappointing. I think uh, some of our players felt that we could have, we could have done better. You know, you look back in the season, you go if it ends and buts. If you'd have won this game and done this and and done this, this things would have changed. And that's what makes it hard, you guys. Is the season's a long time and you have ups and downs. You have injuries. You have sickness. You have finals. You have schoolwork that has to be done. And some of the, these kids are young. You know young kids that, that that some things can influence them in so many different ways. I, I had two girls on my team get engaged during the year, um, which is, you know, is very unusual for most teams. So it, there's a lot of things that go on, but I think one thing we weren't satisfied. We're going to have a lot of, a lot of, uh, I don't know. I think we're going to think about this and we're going to work extra hard. And we're, as a coaching staff, I'm going to learn from this and work harder and my coaches same. And, we're going to do whatever we can to try to get this program back where we need to get it. You certainly have star power coming back next year. You mentioned one of the uh, engaged uh, ladies, Paisley Johnson to Connor Harding. She's the leading scorer returning, a WC Defensive Player of the Year, one of the best in the country. Sarah Hampson uh, is back. And, of course, Shaley Gonzalez off the uh, ACL. So, Jody, we expect a, a really good team next year. Is that what you expect? Uh, yes. I expect that we should be a lot better um, getting – Shaley back, and then, like you mentioned, those two played very well this year. Um, I think uh, Smiler played very well in the tournament. She's only a freshman. I think she'll come in and help us. Uh, Mal helped us a little bit in the year she started. I think she's got a big summer. Babalu and Sig have both have improved. They're going to play mostly the three next year. We have Lauren Gustin, who sat out this year for a transfer, um, probably the best rebounder on the team and a good physical player inside. Um, and we're hoping, you know, we're hoping, I can't tell you the players that we've got a couple of people that we're looking at on the portal. And we also have one player that's a junior college player that we're recruiting really hard that can really help us. I think Lonnie it will come back from her injury from her ankle and, and that. And so, and then of course, Maria, Maria got to start this year. I think learned a lot, got to get a lot of confidence. And, uh, I think it'll, it'll, she'll have another great year for us. The NCAA is set to rule on Monday, March 30th, about the eligibility situation with uh, players that were in the spring and winter semesters. What's your opinion on that? And, and do you anticipate that having any, um, I mean, how that affects your program at all? Do you think it will have any effect? Well, I, I think it will affect a lot of programs because there's some good seniors that I'm sure would like to come back and play. I know. I kind of threw it at my four seniors and two of them said, Hey, you know, I'm going to move on. It's time to, to, to do some other things. And then two of them had some, had some serious interest. So, um, 
I don't I don't see it passing. The reason I'm going to say that is our season was almost was over, except for the postseason. And I think they'll look at that now. I understand some other sports in the winter, like gymnastics, who didn't finish a lot of things. They would like to try to do that and probably get them back. Uh, I even asked one of my good friends who has a lot of good players that are that you know the Oregon you know Kelly Graves. I asked him what he thought about it, and he didn't think it would happen. And a lot of his players will probably go on to the WNBA and and really try to do some other things. But it's sad. I feel bad for so many seniors that work so hard to get to this point and sacrifice, and then it doesn't happen because this is. To me, March Madness is one of the greatest months of the year. It's it's something that people get excited about and 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 all that. And then, of course, I I heard the Olympics is now going to be postponed. A lot of those athletes have prepared themselves for it. Now it's another year, but um, we'll see what happens. I didn't know it was coming Monday. It's good to know that, um, but we'll just do whatever we need to do. Well, Jeff, we uh, we hope the horse is okay. We hope the family's okay. They still got to be fed and uh, taken care of too, right? <laughs> they got to be taken care of, and you know we're 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 communicating with our players every day through text or phone or Skype now, I guess, or whatever FaceTime. We try to make sure they're doing all right in school. Is school's not over? They've got to finish this semester, and and hopefully, you know, four of them are going to be graduating, so they need to take care of this this semester. Well, awesome, Jeff. We appreciate the time, and uh, we'll chat soon. Hey, thanks, you guys, and hang in there. Hopefully this will pass over here pretty quickly. Absolutely. Thanks, Jetty. Jeff Judkins on the thanks. Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.